Knife wing, I hope we don't mess up your guitar too much. <laughs> He said, you got a guitar? Yeah, all right. We always got a drum on standby. My, at this time, Mr. J.J. Artero. Where's my thing? He owes me $3. Thank you. As I walk down, the streets of Chicago are deep. As I walk down the streets of Chicago I saw a young Indian captain who wiped it. Wrapped up in white linen, cold as a clay. <laughs> I was, I was a little boy, seven, eight, nine years old. When I first started hearing those songs. Believe me, it's uh, it changed my life in so many different ways in terms of picking up an instrument. An Indian musician that, that's been recorded and that's got this album out, I didn't know anything about it at the time when I was a kid, but I knew that I really liked it that I really loved what he was doing, what he was singing. And so those words have always, they always ring in my mind from time to time. <clears throat> uh, I apologize for my tears, yet yeah, uh, such a powerful uh, individual Powerful man. I have a couple of stories about him. The first one is uh, I just started out in my music career with my band. And uh, for whatever reasons, I was at the uh, end of the mountain, guys, and like somebody was saying, the first person you meet there was the cultural ambassador. <laughs> uh, man, you like that? You like that cologne too, huh? <laughs> oh, you hey, knew when Paul was around. <laughs> yeah. I had my guitar and I was swinging my acoustic guitar with me. I forget what I was doing there. And uh, he says, is that your guitar? I said, yeah. He said, play me a song. So we snuck off over here to the corner and started playing. Mind you, I'm uh, 35, 36 years old. And one of my childhood heroes is asking me to come sit down and play a song for him. I was so, so nervous. But he kept encouraging, saying, it's OK. It's OK. So I sang whatever I could, the best I could at the time. <laughs> and I handed him, <laughs> handed him my guitar and said, please, I, you've got you've to play a tune yourself. So he played a few tunes and we're there in the lobby, just kind of in the corner away from the tourists, singing the song, hey, she really go, come on, she really come on, she really go. The very few times I met Paul, I loved that man. We worked at the same place. This is the second story. Sorry, it's taking so long. 
we worked at the same place here in Albuquerque. And we were, I think, the only two natives that worked at that place. And every once in a while, he'd storm into my office. I was the IT guy. He was a traditional healer <coughs> on staff. He'd storm into the office and say, God damn it, I don't know. I don't, I don't know about these, there's all this paperwork. They want me to fill out this paperwork. This is traditional healing, it's not, that's not how it goes. <laughs> and you know, I, I didn't know what to tell him. It's just like, you know, you got, if you want to get paid, you got to do some of those things. Anyway, those are my two stories. <laughs> Full of heart, full of strength. Not long ago, when we were forced to leave our homes, our relatives died along the way. We cried and still cry in generations of pain. Yet to this day, we still remain. Now, the U.S. soldiers, they killed my family. Children, elders, and everyone in between. Washington is not, not my government. We will survive, we will resist oh, We will resist We will resist Oh yeah We will resist The elders cried, the children heard their own names the youth is inspired, they're not afraid. They come fully armed with language and laws. The voices of strength blasting through blue horns. And we will resist. We will resist. Oh, yeah. We will resist.